Hello students, it's raining and it's thundering outside, and we're going to be learning about nomenclature, naming ionic compounds. So get your periodic table ready and get your polyatomic ion resource ready. All right, students, a little review. Here's a periodic table that's also in your resources. It shows where the metals, the metalloids, and the non-metals are. This is important because when we're studying ionic compounds, you need to know that an ionic compound is made between a metal ion and a non-metal ion. So they both have to be present for an ionic compound to, to be formed. Um, another reminder is that um, hydrogen is an exception over here. And another reminder is that column 4 to column 12 is what I'm teaching you are the transitional metals. The transition metals, column 4 to column 12. All right. All right, here's another periodic table. It shows the molar masses and the atomic numbers and the symbols and everything. And it also shows um, the different charges on the um, ions by column. So positive 1, positive 2, positive 3 um, for the metal ions. And negative 3, negative 2, negative 1 for the non-metal ions. Okay? And you've seen that the transition metals... Um, uh, their charges are determined by uh, what they're bonded to, and meaning they could have these transitional metals can have actually multiple positive charges. That's what makes them different. All right, students, before getting into the lesson, we're going to review. So you could pause the video right now to try and get all these answers first. Um, you need to answer if it's binary or non-binary. And then number two, you got to name it. So here are the answers. Okay, so this one right here, CO, stands for cobalt, which is located right here on the periodic table. So, hey, it's one of those transitional metals. It's in between column 4 and 12. That's a transitional metal. So that means it needs a Roman numeral. See the rule? Um, name the metal and give a Roman numeral if it's transitional. Okay, so we have to say cobalt, and we know that uh, we're going to leave a space for a Roman numeral, and we know that O stands for oxygen, but we're not going to name it oxygen, we're going to name it oxide. Okay, so how do we know what the Roman numeral is? Remember that the Roman numeral is the charge on the metal. So we have to have our balance beam. Take a look at the formula with one cobalt on this side and two oxygens on this side. Oxygen on the periodic table located right here is a negative two, is a two negative charge. So each oxygen has a two negative charge for a total of four negative on this side. Four negative can only balance with four positive, which means this one cobalt must have a four positive charge. That means the Roman numeral is gonna be looking like that. That's the Roman numeral for four. Okay, let's do the next one. Um, oh my goodness, I forgot to do say if it was binary or not. That's all right, let's do this next one. This one is binary because there's cobalt and oxygen, that's two elements. This one right here is non-binary because there's cobalt, nitrogen, and oxygen. That's non-binary. Okay, well, let's rewrite that. Non-binary. Okay, let's figure out what the name of it's gonna be. Well, since it's cobalt, and we know that's a transitional metal, that we still have to have a Roman numeral. Is it automatically gonna be four? No, we don't know what that, that yet. But the next thing, we're going to leave a space for a Roman numeral, but the next thing is the NO3. You'll notice that that's a polyatomic ion named nitrate. Nitrate, A-T-E at the end. So we have to play the little balance beam. It looks like there is one cobalt and three nitrates. There's one cobalt with three nitrates. Oh my goodness, it's going to get messy. Three nitrates all the way over here. If you look at your polyatomic sheet, polyatomic ion sheet located in resources, um, You'll notice that each nitrate has a one negative charge. That's a total of three negatives on the right side of the balance beam. And three negatives can only balance out with three positives, meaning this cobalt must have a three positive charge. So a Roman numeral is going to be the Roman numeral three. Okay, the three, the, the charge on the metal is the Roman numeral. The charge on the metal is the Roman numeral okay all right and that's this that's the thing about transition metals is they could have different charges they could have multiple charges like I just showed you right here the cobalt has a positive 3 when it's bonded to nitrate 
The cobalt has a uh, positive four when it's bonded to oxygen, at least two oxygens. Next example, looks like we have one element and two elements. That means that this is a binary um, uh, element, or excuse me, compound. Let's follow the rules for binary. It says to name the metal, give a Roman numeral of its transitional, and then name the nonmetal ending with iod. Okay, so we have Mg for magnesium that's located right here. Oh, excuse me, that's located right here on the periodic table. Is magnesium a transitional metal? No, it is not. It's not in columns 4 through 12, so magnesium is not going to be a transitional metal. That means we don't need to include a Roman numeral. See the rules? It says Roman numeral if, if transitional. Okay, so let's name the metal and then the nonmetal. Magnesium. Oxide, you have to end ide. You have to end the nonmetal with ide. That's it, no Roman numeral is necessary. Next one is calcium. Oh, I said it already. Oh well. Calcium. And this is a non-binary. Why? Because there's one, two, three elements. That's not two, so that means it's gonna be non-binary because binary means two. Calcium, and then SO4 you'll recognize as a polyatomic ion called sulfate. Sulfate, hey, is there a Roman numeral? Well, how do we know if there's a Roman numeral or not? Is the metal a transitional metal? Let's find out. Calcium's right here, number 20 on the periodic table. It's way down there, so is it transitional? No, it is not transitional because it's not in between column 4 and 12 like I told you, so it does not need a Roman numeral. So what we're doing is simply following these rules right here. Okay, first you find out if it's binary. If yes, you name the metal, give a Roman number if it's transitional, then name the nonmetal ending with iod. If it is not binary, then you name the metal, gotta have a Roman number if it's transitional, and then two, name the polyatomic ion. So those are the rules we're following. Those are the rules we're gonna follow today. When we learn how to take the formula and write the name. Students, I think I just said that we were gonna be doing formula to name, but uh, no, today's lesson is gonna be doing the name and figuring out the formula. So um, that's what we're learning, type three and four ionic compounds. We're, I'm gonna give you the name and you have to figure out the formula. All right, students, as a reminder, ionic compounds are made between metals and non-metals. And uh, yeah, this is a quick little reminder. Get your periodic table out so you know the charges. So you could review the charges because we're balancing charges here. We need to balance charges. That's the name of the game. Okay, so here's a, a few examples. Okay, we need to give the formula for iron 3 chloride. Well, first what we can do is uh, uh, show our balance beam and give the formula for iron and then give the formula for chloride. Okay, well, uh, if we look if we look for iron first, um, it, we could see that it's a transition metal located right here. Well, how do we know what the charge is? Since it's a transition metal, it could have multiple charges. So we have to look at the Roman numeral because remember, the Roman numeral is the charge, determines the charge on the metal. So this specific iron has a charge of three positive. That's what the Roman numeral means. Okay, then if you look for chloride, Chloride's located right here on the periodic table. That means you know that there's a one minus charge on chloride. Well, this is a problem because one minus does not balance with three positive, okay? So what we have to do in our formula is we have to include more chloride ions in order to balance out the charge of one iron ion. So how many extra chlorides do we have to add? Here's another chloride and here's another chloride. So that means now we have three minus balancing with three positive. So our, oh, forgot the L right there. So our formula for iron three chloride is gonna look like this. Iron chloride with a subscript of three. The little subscript of three means that there are three chloride ions in this one ionic compound of iron three chloride. Okay, I hope that makes sense because we're going to do a few more examples and you're going to answer some questions. So here we go. 
Iron 2 chloride. Well, what does this mean? You should be able to figure this out by now. The iron um, has a 2 positive charge this time. It's different than this one. Yes, it is, because the Roman numeral is different in this one compared to the one above. This says 2. That's why there's a positive 2 charge on the metal. Okay? But chloride will always stay the same charge. Chloride has a negative one charge. Why? Because it's gaining one electron to be to have the same number of electrons as the closest noble gas. It does that for stability so that it, it can become less reactive. So we have a one minus charge on the chloride. One minus is not happy with two positive. So we need to add another chloride ion in order for the charges in this ionic compound to balance. So now two negatives balance is happy with two positives. So what's our formula going to be? You write it down first, Fe for iron, Cl for chloride, and you have to put a subscript of two. If you don't have a subscript of two, it's wrong. If it's three, it's wrong. If it's one, it's wrong. If it's four, it's wrong. It must be two because that's how the charges balance. Okay, here's a, another example. Hey, look, it's another iron. It's iron four chloride this time. I think, you I think you're getting the hang of this. I think you're kind of understanding what's happening here. Let's draw it out real quick. So here's our iron. We know it has a four positive charge. Yes, that is different than the first two examples because the Roman numeral is changing, people. The Roman numeral is changing. It can, it can do that because the transitional metals, all of the transitional metals have that capability. All of the trans transitional metals can have multiple charges. Um, there are different rules for each of them, but uh, for right now, you just need to know that they can have multiple charges. Okay, and finally, uh, chloride is our negative one charge. We need to have a total of four chlorides in order to balance out, oop, in order to balance out the one iron. So that's four minus balancing with four positive. Um, and that means our, our formula should look like this. The formula for this ionic compound is FeCl with a little subscript of four. Why are there four chlorides? Well, because there's one two, three, four chlorides needed to balance out the charge of just the one iron. Why? Because the charge of the iron is positive four and the charge of each chloride is one negative. All right, last example, students. Last example is gonna be vanadium four oxide. Vanadium four oxide. Maybe you can figure this one out yourself. What is the formula for vanadium four oxide? Well, let's find vanadium on the periodic table. It's located right here in this area. It's in column five, so it for sure is a transitional metal. You also know that it's a transitional metal because the, the name has the Roman numeral there. So if the name has a Roman numeral, then you know it's a transition metal. But let me warn you, the internet will give you Roman numerals for metals that are not transitional. If you listen to the internet, you will fail. If you listen to Mr. Edwards, you're gonna do great, okay? So uh, uh, let's put our balance beam up, and it looks like we have vanadium with a positive four charge, and it looks like we have oxide. Huh, how can I tell what the charge on oxide is? Well, by its location on the periodic table in relation to the noble gases. So here's oxygen, and when oxygen becomes an ion, it has a two minus charge, and now it's oxide. So here's two minus charge. Well, we can see, that two minus is not happy with four positive. They need to balance each other out. So in order for this ionic compound to actually form an ionic compound, there must be one vanadium bonding with two oxygen atoms. And that means that there's gonna be a four minus charge balancing out happily with a four positive charge. Okay, so the formula is you write it like this, V for vanadium, O for oxygen, and there are two of them. And that is how you write type three and type four ionic compounds name to formula, okay? You have to be aware of the transitional metals um, having the Roman numeral. Okay, students, I hope you took uh, diligent notes and I hope you um, uh, are doing well and uh, you know, Hope your animals are doing well in all this thunder and rain. Bye.